seems like interrupting uh, high-ranking plasma members has become the new standard for this LP, but seriously, it's sort of always the same thing. It's like, rah, 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 you can't beat us. Ah, I'm gonna beat you! I'm gonna fight for everyone! And blah, blah, blah. Of course, the, the story progresses in the meanwhile, uh, in the meantime, sorry, with new developments. But still, it's always the same thing. And, um, yeah. You're not gonna do that. You're not gonna prove I'm right right away. I swear I didn't that on purpose. It's just, you know, it's always the same thing when Getsis starts talking and talking and talking and it just doesn't seem to end. Uh, and you know what? This is, this, is, this is really hard to comment over just because this is so samey. I guess I could go the easy way out and just read out the dialogue, but... You can read, and besides, it, 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 it sort of gets on my nerve when LPers just read the dialogue for that exact reason. You know, I can read! I'm able to see what the characters are saying for myself. Unless you have something really funny going for yourself, just don't do that. But of course, that's my opinion. Feel free to disagree. Some of you may get their, their, uh, their jollies by simply hearing let players just read the dialogue. So, yeah, we are going to be warped outside, which is good, because I don't want to stay in here any longer than I have to, especially considering I'm going to have to uh, redo this part later without the plasma grunts. Obviously, that goes without saying. So, um... Could he be trying to prove he's right by winning the battle of the two dragons? That, well, that's basically the idea, because seeing how much I get along with my Pokémon gave him, you know, he, he's starting to doubt himself. So, um, what's going on here? Uh, okay, yeah, that's right, I gotta go to uh, the museum in Nacreen. For some reason, I remember that being a bit earlier, but uh, I am going to have to go there now, apparently. There is, a, there is something that I really gotta see over there, so I am going to do just that. And after that, we are now in the month of December, which means that the in-game season of winter has begun. And what this means is that, you remember all those areas in Twist Mountain and Icerus City that we couldn't get to because there was no snow? Well, we can get there now, so after we're done in Nacreen, we're gonna go and explore these places. Okay, we are over at Nacreen City. Uh, of course, uh, I already um, did the transition to winter off screen, so you won't get to see it, but just know that it's winter right now. So, apparently, Lenora has something for us. And, yep, that was the stone that was found in the desert resort. So, this is why Alder thought it was over in the Relic Castle. So yeah, this is the dark stone that we uh, that we completely missed. Good thing Team Plasma didn't get their hands on on it because if it if it was there, you just know they would have taken it. So I imagine that the stone being at the museum, you know, it was the game's way to prevent Team Plasma from gaining both stones. And oh, Bi Bianca's making a good point. What if they noticed? Uh, the the dark stone back when they ran away with the with the dragon skull. So not only did they run away with something that had nothing to do with Zekrom to begin with, but they also had the real thing right under their noses. They ran away with the wrong exhibit. That just increased the amount of fail from that particular scene in the game tenfold. Wow! Team Plasma really, really, really sucks. So, the plan here is that if Alder loses to N, which as gets is said, well, N, thi N thinks it's a certainty that he's going to beat Alder. So if that happens, it's all up to me. I gotta find a way to revive Zekrom from that, uh, from that dark stone. So, Cedric asks the same question. No one seems to have a clue of what to do. And, uh, okay, could you elaborate, please? Uh, what's going on? Oh, right! Uh, he's talking about, uh, the, um, 
Gym leaders of Opelucid City, Drayden and Iris. Which one you fight depends on uh, which game you have in white. I'm going to be fighting Iris. Whereas in black, I, w I would fight Drayden. Drayden is also the gym leader in both Black 2 and White 2. But yeah, the, the idea is that apparently Iris might know something, so I gotta go to Opelucid City and find Iris and ask her how to revive Zekrom from this stone. So, now everyone's going on their merry way. Uh, Professor Juniper is going to try and find out more about Reshiram and Zekrom. Alder went back to the Pokemon League to... Uh, probably confront and and inevitably get his ass kicked because you know he's got reshiram and all and you just know it's gonna come down to us having to beat Anne at the end so um yeah yes i do know opelucid city even though you know i haven't been there this playthrough so i guess i'm not supposed to know about it yet well whatever whatever uh it's uh, past a route eight and two blind bridge so uh, it's still a, it's still a little ways away, especially considered we have to go through Route 9 to reach Opelucid City to begin with. So, we're gonna head back to Iceris City real quick. There are a few items that uh, we can grab now that it's winter. There's also a house that uh, we can only visit during the winter, and I really want to show you that because there's something really interesting in there. Uh, there's also um, something up here at the near the entrance to... Uh, Dragon Spiral Tower, and, uh, yeah, random battle, of course, that was gonna happen. You know what? I find it really interesting how, um, you know, you, there are certain places you can only access in certain seasons. I guess this is why they made seasons only one uh, month long, though, so that, you know, if, if you get here in, like, January, you won't have, uh, or, or rather, April, you're not going to, uh, have to wait, like, nine months to uh, get back there. So... Virizion just learned Swords Dance, so obviously a better choice than Retaliate, which was there as filler and absolutely nothing else. So, uh, we got a Nugget up here, so uh, the rest of the items should be in Iceris City proper. There's something down here. Can I get up here? Yep. Uh, it, it's sort of weird because it doesn't look like I should be able to climb up here, but it still works nonetheless. Uh, and we got a max potion. So uh, this other area that I was talking about with the house that you can only enter in the winter is uh, down to uh, the south, to the southern area of the city. Okay, this is here for absolutely nothing. So you get up here, and there are a few items here, presumably. We got a tiny mushroom, which means I should go back to Route 5 and give it to the cook that's there. Uh, uh, when I when I get the time to do so, obviously I'm gonna do it off screen. And oh, we got another thing here. What is it? Mom, it's another tiny mushroom. So we got two tiny mushrooms and one big mushroom just from this area here. So um, this is the house that I was talking about. So um, can I talk to you, please? Okay, my dad used to have a cool job in a faraway region. Now just watch this is the member of Team Rocket that uh, tried stealing the machine part back in the Kanto arc of uh, Gold Silver Crystal slash Hard Gold Soul Silver. So yeah, after being defeated and being thwarted uh, in, uh, in those games, he decided to come back to Unova, try to found a new Team Rocket here, but he didn't do so. Instead, he got married, so there's no time for Team Rocket anymore. I think this is an awesome cameo, especially considered that uh, I think this guy actually said that he was going back to his own region all the way back in those games, even before Black and White came out. So it's like they maybe planned all of this in advance. And, okay, there doesn't seem to be anything there. Uh, the guy's wife said that uh, the Rage Candy Bar was uh, the favorite of one of the guy's co-workers. So I can only assume said co-worker was the guy in Mahogany that blocked you from leaving the city as long as you hadn't defeated Price. So I'm going to go with uh, Jellicent in the lead for this car since um, it's quite effective against the foes found in Twist Mountain as we found out on our first journey through here. So we start off with a rock gem. Pretty cool. 
So, uh, while I do that, uh, of course you'll notice that the place is completely different. We can no longer leave from the lower end of this room, for one. And, uh, if you come here, uh, in winter, on your first time through, uh, this is, go this is gonna go by a lot quicker than in, uh, the other seasons, because you can just skip most of the dungeon that way. Of course, I like to do everything, so I wouldn't have done that regardless, but... Still, something that I want to talk about today. Uh, one of you gave me a link to a fact on Game Facts that uh, gave a, that gives advice for um, in-game play, but except for the fact that I find said advice to be pretty bad for the most part. And I just found a Cryogonal, which is a pretty rare encounter, even in winter. It's, a pra it's nearly impossible to find in the uh, other seasons, as I believe I previ previously mentioned. But yeah, that fact is the Pokémon comparison fact for uh, Black and White 2, if you want to go, go look it up yourself on GameFAQs. Yeah, uh, that guide seems well written, but there are just some points of advice that I don't agree with very much. Uh, one of them is the idea according to which it's okay to double up on moves of the same type. Now, I know I've done that on two Pokémon thus far in this LP, but usually I would not recommend that. The reason why he says that is because, you know, uh, he seems to think that uh, the AI is just a big punching bag, so carrying stab moves around is uh, more important than uh, type coverage moves. Personally, I think he criminally underrates how much of an asset type coverage moves are. Because, well, I got done playing Y2, which is quite possibly the hardest main series Pokemon game in existence thus far. Challenge mode notwithstanding, of course, I say that because of the high level curve, which typically makes things tougher. So I really, really used those type coverage moves a whole lot. And th the idea is that, you know, sometimes you're going to have a Pokémon that's going to know a certain move, and in which it would be appropriate for taking down the enemy, except if the enemy survives, he can kick your ass as well. So you may want to use another Pokémon that has a move of the same type, but that is, you know... It, it, it's going to be less powerful, but the opponent is also going to be less powerful against you, so it would be a better idea to use the one that uses that type as simply type coverage. And I, I know it may sound complicated just hearing me talk about it, so hopefully you get the meaning of what I'm trying to say. So, we are now in the great outdoors, and remember how our dowsing machine pinged like crazy before whenever we entered this area? Well, now we can get the items that caused it to ping like that. So, uh, as I was about to say, uh, that piece of advice is especially weird considering that another piece of advice that he gives is not using a full team, using only three or four Pokémon. So, you, you'd think that if you use less Pokémon, type coverage on each, on each one of them would become that much more important. But he seems to dismiss the idea like, you know, it's just completely worthless. And speaking of that, using only three or four Pokémon, I can't say I recommend that. I strongly recommend using a full team for maximized type coverage. And especially because, well, he seems to think that the, the difference in levels would be that much more important if you use less Pokémon. But it's not like you're given the choice of using 3 level 100 Pokémon or 6 level 50 Pokémon. The difference, and I speak from experience, is a lot less than that. And that's especially true in Generation 5, where you get a penalty the higher your level is compared to the opponent, making the difference even less. Heck, you could probably rotate 7 or 8 team members, and it wouldn't be such a bad idea in Generation 5. Now there's a lot more I'd like to say about that fact, but unfortunately I'm out of time, so it's gonna have to wait until the next video, so I hope you tune in then.